Hey guys, this is AC Sivers Tech, and today what we're going over is corrugated stainless steel tubing manufacturers. And so right here you have track pipe slash counter strike, and this is gas tight and uh, flash shield, and this is Word Flex, and then also Word Flex Max. So basically what I wanted to go over was some similarities between the three, but also the differences between the three, because there certainly are major differences between the three manufacturers and you know, something else we want to talk about is should that technician get certified in just one manufacturer only or or multiple? And my recommendation to you is to get certified in all three uh, major manufacturers. So there are several differences. They're all going towards this black coating on the outside right here. And uh, I don't have a black one of the WordFlex Max. This is just a standard WordFlex. And this one, uh, this manufacturer was... Uh, basically the last one to move to the uh, the black coating on the outside and it all has to do with lightning uh, dissipation and basically you don't want lightning strike to end up eating a hole right through your stainless steel corrugated tubing uh, because then you have a gas leak in your building so this can run propane natural gas um, and you would pressure test it the same way as your standard schedule 40 or copper uh, gas lines if you if you have a low pressure system that's less than a 2 psi typically natural gas is running at 5 to 8 inch water column and propane is running at 11 to 13 inch water column it's 27.6 water column for 1 psig to give you a reference your car tire is about 40 psig you know it's going to depend but what we typically do is we'll pressure test this with a 30 psi gauge and we'll pressure test it up to 6 psi that meets three requirements for the International Fuel Gas Code. One is it's one and a half times the uh, gas that you're actually going to run through it. So that's 6 PSI is certainly higher than that. It has to be more than one-fifth of the gauge range. So 6 times 5 is 30 PSIG. So you have to pressure test it up to at least 6 PSIG if you're using a 30-pound pressure test. And you also have to pressure test higher than 3 PSIG. So those are the three... Um, limits that the International Fuel Gas Code puts on you in reference to pressure testing, you're going to do it the same way you do with your Schedule 40. The equivalent hydraulic diameter of each of these tubings are different, okay? The corrugations are different. So though you can still cut them with a standard um, tubing cutter, ratcheting tubing cutter, uh, with a standard blade or more preferably with a stainless steel blade like this WordFlex cutter right here, you still can only use the same manufacturer's fittings only. So this is WordFlex fitting, so you can only use WordFlex. The WordFlex fittings actually have two ways to seal. So it uses the double flare in the front, but also there's a gasket right down here in the actual uh, fitting. And it's not a rubber gasket, okay, because rubber can end up breaking. This is, this is a different type of gasket, and it just kind of compresses up against there and ends, ends up sealing it up. So the way that you can tell it's WordFlex is right on the side of the tubing. It'll say WordFlex, like it says right here. And on the nuts, what's nice about this, all the nuts say WordFlex right on the top. They're, they're very easy to identify. Um, once again, here is your, your rings. Uh, for You're going to put the nut on first, and then you put your rings on. And you know, put them on just like this. Push your nut forward. And then you're going to go ahead and tighten this in. The biggest thing with any of the three of these corrugated stainless steel tubing manufacturers, you make sure that you do not spin this part. Do not spin this part. You're only spinning the nut. Otherwise, you're going to scar the inside, either the corrugated stainless steel tubing or, in this case, the gasket. So you want to make sure that you're only tightening the nut, and you have to use uh, two wrenches in order to do that. The other thing that you need to be aware of is each manufacturer wants you to tighten that nut uh, to a specific spot. Whereas the older gas tight uh, fittings used to have to tighten them pretty darn hard. Uh, then you had a different um, fitting here with these rings and you didn't have to tighten them as hard. And then now you have these ones that actually uh, kind of pinch into this outer coating. Uh, so all I'm saying is that I'd encourage you to take the training on all three manufacturers uh, products right here just so you're very familiar with each of them. Gas tight, you can actually do that certification, I believe, online. And the other two, track pipe and word flex, you can either contact a rep in your area to see where they're going to be holding their next trainings at, 
where you can also contact your supply houses to see which brand they carry and when their next class is going to be. Once again, they're typically free, uh, so it's certainly worth it. And also for your resume, you know, uh, a technician that's coming out of a school or a technician that's that's new, you know, if they have all three corrugated stainless steel tubing manufacturers, you know, certifications on their resume as well as their EPA universal refrigerant license and maybe you know some other certifications as well it's gonna look pretty good you know we call them resume builders right but the big thing about this is just making sure that you're going to be able to operate with these things safely so even if your company only uses one say they just use gas type and flash shield they only use that but the problem is you're going to run into houses that end up having track pipe or word flex you may have only two in your area that are commonly used or you might have three like we have around here you have uh, several different manufacturers used in our local area. So you're going to have to maybe fix a line or add on to a line or something like that. So I highly encourage you, you need to be certified just in order to be able to disassemble them and reconnect them. You know, uh, you want to be able to be certified for even liability sake. These new gas tight rings right here, they end up cutting into this this black outer coating and into this aluminum right here. So this aluminum, you actually have a black coating and then you have the aluminum and then you have another coating underneath to separate this for your for your lightning strike away from your inner corrugated stainless steel tubing itself. So this actually pierces in in order to make sure, now obviously this ring is a small ring, this is for half inch and this is inch and a quarter. But, but anyway, I don't happen to have that, that uh, a fitting right here right now. But anyway, what it does is it pinches in in order to bond this to the fitting itself. So these black outer coatings are a better rating for uh, potential lightning strikes, but you need to check in your area as well if you need to ground your gas line. Uh, typically, typically, it's done with uh, six gauge solid copper wire. Uh, but you would end up clamping this around part of your Schedule 40 piping or your, or possibly the uh, the brass connections, and definitely not on the corrugated stainless steel tubing. It's definitely not there. It's either on the fitting or on the Schedule 40 piping. But basically, you're going to go by whatever the trainer says for that particular manufacturer. And some of these things change, like the grounding has changed a lot. You know, back and forth on does a house need to be grounded you know uh, if you have if you're using uh, your corrugated stainless steel tubing and, and then depending on which manufacturer so you really need to check your area to make sure that that you're covered and you're doing it the proper way once again yet another reason to just be up to date with that manufacturer's training another thing that's nice about corrugated stainless steel tubing is that you could have you know your main come in and then you can branch off with something like this you can do home runs uh, right over to uh, each of the appliances in the house, so that's a that's a big plus. The time it takes to run this in a building is dramatically less than, than Schedule 40. Also, in an earthquake zone, you know, in in a location that has a lot of earthquakes, this may be a lot more preferable than something that's rigid like this uh, Schedule 40 galvanized gas piping. I believe everything has its application, you know, uh, in different areas. Sometimes it really is more preferable to run. Your schedule 40 sometimes it's more preferable to run corrugated stainless steel tubing if you're wondering what this is this is self-fusing tape so your training rep might say hey you know you can see off the ends with your self-fusing tape where basically if you have any of this left um, cut back and then you know here's where your nut is you can wrap your self-fusing tape to connect from here over to your nut gas tape they always like to have that plastic more towards the inside you know not all the way into here but but usually you wouldn't have anything showing on a gas tight fitting uh, but some of the older track pipe you might have that you know depending on once again what the trainer says so this self-fusing tape it sticks to itself it's not sticky it's not sticky like this but it will stick onto itself so if you I'm just gonna squeeze it together here and you can see all right it sticks together pretty pretty well so another thing that you need to know, make sure that once you do put these connections together that you are leak checking it with, with anti-corrosive leak detector, like that rector seal. So you want to make sure that you're not using dish detergent mixed with water, you know, the soapy bubbles. 
make sure you definitely definitely are not using that because what can happen is that ends up eating away at the corrugated stainless steel tubing and I'll let the reps tell you their stories about how that ends up eating through the pipe and ends up having a leak you know I'm not gonna steal their thunder for that but uh, that's a big big deal so definitely use a non corrosive leak detector because that uh, dish detergent it's not like it used to be they're a lot more corrosive now so something that's non corrosive like the rector seal or super blue that's what you want to use as you can see for each manufacturer you even have different rings like I told you gas tight has updated uh, their rings and and fittings uh, track pipe and counter strike you know they have this auto snap one where you where you are literally you have a nut attached to the fitting uh, with your piece inside and you're pressing it in like that and then you're tightening it so each manufacturer has a different uh, set of things that they want you to do and how hard to tighten the nut and and when to stop things like that so I have all of those uh, manufacturers linked down in the description below um, just so you can do a little research on them and try to find when their next training course is and if you're looking for any of the tools or supplies used in this video, I have them all linked down in the description below. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech, where we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content, such as articles, videos, and answering questions. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.